which I'm taking to be more interesting. Okay, so equally if we try to uh, substitute whatever we have, let's say we plug in, so 2 sine 0, well that's the original, but sine 0 is, if you look at the graph of a sine function, it starts from there, right? So sine 0 is just a 0. Cosine starts from there, that's why cosine of 0 is a 1. So let's try to differentiate this. Because we know if we just substitute directly, if you put a 0 there and a 0 there, you are going to end up with zeros. Equally on the bottom, 0, 0. So you end up with 0 over 0. So that's not what we want. So let's try to differentiate. What's the derivative of sine again? So the derivative of sine is cosine, right? Okay. You differentiate whatever is in the brackets and multiply by the coefficient. So the derivative of x is 1. 1 times 2 is just 2. Derivative of sine is cosine of x. Minus. Derivative of sine again is cosine 2x. Now I have to multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets. In, this, in that case it's a 2. Over. On the bottom, differentiate, differentiating what we have, x minus sine of x. x is going to give us a 1. And then sine of x is going to be cosine of x because the derivative of x is just the 1. So no difference will be seen there. Okay, let's move on. So, I don't know why I've omitted the limit, but the limit still applies. So the limit as x approaches 0. So can we determine the limit from that point? So let's try to distribute. If we put a 0 there and a 0 there, you're going to have 2 here because cosine of 0 is 1. So you're going to end up with just 1 times 2, 2. The other part as well, 2, which is going to be a 0 again on the top. On the bottom, what basically is going to come out there, if you plug in cosine of 0, you're going to get a 1. 1 minus 1 as well will be a 0. So we're trying to avoid all that because if this is still indeterminate. We can try again. So you can actually continue differentiating as many times until, until we are able to get the answer. So what is the derivative of cosine? Derivative of cosine is going to be sine. So 2 sine of x minus there again. Derivative of what's in the brackets is 2 times this 2 will give us a 4. So we have 4 sine of 2x. And then on the bottom, the constant will go. Now we have the derivative of cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So multiply by that negative, that is already there, it's going to be positive. So we're going to have a positive sine of x. I don't know why I didn't think about that as I was doing that on top. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is negative. This will now become end up a positive because derivative of this is going to be a negative sine. As we move on in the next step, are we able to distribute? So sine 0 it is a 0, so that's already indeterminant. We can't s simplify that. Let's try one more time. The limit as x approaches 0. And then derivative of sine is cosine, just positive sines, cosine, so it's negative cosine of x. Derivative of sine 2x is going to be positive cosine 2x. Now 2 multiplied by the 4 will now be 8. So we're going to have plus 8 cosine of 2x over derivative of sine of x is going to be cosine of x. At this point, we know if we put in on the bottom, it's not going to be indeterminant anymore because cosine of 0 is a 1. So if we were to distribute now at this point, where there is x, we put zeros, right? So that would mean we're going to be determining the cosine of 0 and cosine of 0. So those are 1s. So we end up with negative 2 plus 8 on top over a 1, which is now... That is a positive 6, right? So uh, 6 is the answer to that question. And then